Thank you for listening to The Business Beer. Don't forget to share this episode and subscribe. Joining me today is founder of PNL, Brand Purpose Institute, Paul Spires. He focuses on helping leaders rediscover and re-engage their purpose. Thanks for joining me today, Paul. Oh, it's my pleasure, John. Thank you for the invite. So I'm excited, you being all the way from the UK, um, I'd love to, for all the listeners that don't know who you are, if you don't mind sharing with them um, how you became that thought leader of PL and what does that really mean and your journey along the way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm from originally from Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, grew up in a small town and in, uh, in the North Island, and I moved to the UK about just over two decades ago. And I've spent most of my professional career in the creative industries of some level. I was a professional musician for many years, worked in PR, marketing, brand and reputation management, and so on. And most of that time, I've been an entrepreneur of some description, founding my own agencies, running my own businesses, and so on. The idea for the new p and uh, principles and leadership, rather than the old p and profit and loss, came from a, an experience I had in my own business of round sort of five or six years ago, we were subject at the time to a series of very unethical actions. Um, it took the business to its knees. It took me to my knees personally. And I thought at the time, being a creative at heart, that there's, there's got to be a better way of doing business than that which we had been subjected to at that time. And the idea for a new p &L based on principles and leadership, not just profit and loss, sort of came to me. And the I guess the idea stuck around for about five years in my mind. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that just because an idea is not right for right now doesn't mean it's not right forever. And I knew there was something in the, the new p &L as a concept, but I couldn't quite work out what it was. And then about two years ago, just over two years ago, the idea of a podcast and the new p &L sort of merged together in my mind. I thought I'd dip my toe in the water initially just to see whether the concept of a new p &L based on principles and leadership resonated. Um, we grew as a podcast quite exponentially over the last two years, uh, both in terms of episodes. I think we're 180 now, but listen to in over 80 countries, thousands of entrepreneurs and business leaders and employees listen to us each month. So there's clearly a, a desire and a, and a resonance with a new p &L. People want a business with more principles, with more purpose, with, with more courageous and disciplined leadership. So 12 months ago, I launched the new PL Brand Purpose Institute. And that is the consultancy side, if you like, where we work with business leaders to, as you alluded to, to redesign and redefine the principles and the purpose that underpin that business, and then realign it with the commercial ambitions of that business. Because I think too much, far too many programs and consultancies and training, they, they look to focus on purpose over here but they ignore the commercial ambitions of that business over there. And if you don't align those two, then there's not a lot of hope for that proposition over time because the business has to be profitable, has to make money, has to move forward, has to grow. But that purpose and that commercial ambition should be in alignment. That's amazing. And I, I want to thank you for sharing that uh, journey of yours. But before I ask you more about your business, if you don't mind taking me back to you know, back before you started this business, many businesses of yours being a creator, musician, entrepreneur, did you study um, business, marketing, finance? Like what was your journey like back in New Zealand before you came to UK? Yeah, I, I never studied entrepreneurship or anything. I, le I left school at sort of 16 years old and went and worked in a photographic studio when I, when I started. Um, but I've always just had that desire to understand and explore creativity and what makes us think from a creative perspective, the role curiosity and, and purpose play in, in entrepreneurship and in creativity more generally. But I can also, you know, to tell you a very personal story, I can also trace what I'm doing now right back to when I was seven years old. My, we didn't have really any books in the house, um, but my parents won an encyclopedia in a raffle when I was seven. And my mum will always say that I just devoured that book cover to cover. And it really set my passion for, for knowledge acquisition and discovery and curiosity. And I'm in the UK now. I'm doing a podcast now. I'm running a, an institute. 
And I can draw a direct line from that seven-year-old boy, barefoot boy, reading that encyclopedia to where I am now. It is a complete linear journey of wanting to discover and uncover and, and source information and be an information sponge and, and want to learn more and more and more all the time. So it's, you know, really, I can trace my my whole journey back to that seven-year-old boy and the, and the winning of that encyclopedia. That's amazing. And then how did you become so curious to then start all these different agencies and entrepreneurial journeys of yours? Um, was it because you worked at another company and found that they weren't fulfilling, they weren't, you know, aligned with your principles? What drove you to pivot to explore that entrepreneurial spirit of yours? I've had some wonderful jobs and I've worked for some wonderful people over the years, I guess. And, and this isn't mean to, you know, meant to sound sort of grander than it is, but I've just always felt that I have to do this myself, you know, that I, I have to explore it myself. I have to set up businesses myself. I have to see and test myself in terms of my capabilities, what I can deliver, what I can't. I've failed plenty of times. I've won a few times, succeeded a few times, but there is just something in me I come from a family of small business owners, so entrepreneurs, if that's what you want to call them. Um, you know, my, my, my father and, and uncles were all tradesmen and they all ran their own businesses. But I think it's just a desire to, to continually test my own abilities and try myself and see what I'm capable of. And it just never seemed to fit quite enough working for someone. I always felt that I could, I could do more on my own. They weren't doing anything wrong. I just felt I could do something different. And that's great to hear because um, knowing a little bit more about you now, um, it might have already been inside you, right? Exposed to all these family members and peers and siblings or whatnot, going off on their own, testing the waters, uh, being more uh, open to trying the hardest thing in the world to do, which is uh, sacrifice a nine to five job, stable income pay to not know when the next paycheck is going to be. Yeah. How do you cultivate new clients? How do you service clients better? Um, listening to them, asking questions, probing, figuring out like what really matters to a customer. How do you do value adds? How do you service them well? So along those years of success or not success, what did you learn? And if you don't mind sharing with listeners, like you being more mature than maybe some of the listeners that are thinking of starting a business, what could you advise them? You never know enough <laughs> is probably the thing. I think the minute you think you, you know what you're doing in business is the time you need to take a step back and think I'm missing something because uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm in my 50s now, my early 50s. I think I'm only just, despite all of those years of entrepreneurship, I'm only just doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing in my professional career. And that has taken me nearly 30 years of setting up marketing agencies. I, I had a surfwear clothing brand for some time. I ran a sort of design engineering company as well. But I've only just found what I'm supposed to be doing. And I described it to someone the other day as... I feel for many, many years, I've been standing in the right field, but looking the wrong way. And then with the launch of the, the new p &L, it almost felt like I turned around and realized that actually I was supposed to be running for that try line or that goal line, not, not the other one I was facing towards. So I think entrepreneurship is about a constant learning. And there are many, many failures in entrepreneurship, small and big but you have to take your learnings from each one. You have to continually recognize, be humble that you've got a lot more to learn. And that frankly, if you're not dead, it's not over. You know, you've got to keep going and going and going and going. And as I say, it's taken me 30 years of entrepreneurship to find what I'm truly supposed to be doing. But I, I believe this is my calling, but it didn't come overnight. I wasn't a 25 year old tech entrepreneur that, that found it immediately. It's taken me 30 years of my career to discover it but you've just got to keep believing that tomorrow will be better than today i think and and it's great that you're mentioning this because 30 years overnight success just like <laughs> all those millionaire billionaire successful businesses and brands out there it didn't happen overnight the idea right. happened 
and they probably changed the idea many times, pivoted from different brands, service, clients, personas, different ways to market themselves. But like I said, it takes time to figure things out for yourself, but also recognize what makes you purposeful and happy, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and throughout those years, like starting these different agencies and companies, um, if you don't mind sharing, like what did you recognize as success or failure? Because if it doesn't break you, I think it is success because you're learning no matter what. Absolutely. I, th I think I'm not suggesting this is across the board, but this is my own journey. I think when you're a young entrepreneur, you generally only perceive or largely perceive success in terms of money. Um, because you look up, you know, your, your aspirational uh, mentors are those who have succeeded in some shape or form, and that success is represented in money of some shape or form. Um, as you get older as an entrepreneur, you realize that actually, of course, you need money, you need money to pay your rent or your mortgage, what, whatever it happens to be, but that's only part of the picture. Success starts to materialize itself in the way you feel about yourself, the way the knowledge you acquire, the the relationships that you start to develop, the perspective that you have on life, both business and personal. I think success ultimately for an entrepreneur is, is about recognizing that it's your journey to become a, a fully a full person, a fully rounded individual, and that you've acquired knowledge, you've acquired relationships, you've acquired humility. You may have acquired a bit of money along the way as well, um, but you've learned through all of that process. So success is about learning. It's about being humble. It's about knowing your own limitations, but also recognizing what you have achieved over that point in time. So it's the balance between certainly being humble, but also being appreciative of your success. My mum used to say something to me, be, which I've always carried with me, and it was be happy, but never be satisfied. So always be happy where you are in your entrepreneurial journey. Be proud of your successes to date and learn from your failures, but never be satisfied because that lack of satisfaction will, will drive you on to succeed and, and achieve the next thing. But, but you shouldn't always look for tomorrow or next week or next year to I'll be happy when that kind of, you know, that, that philosophy, you must be happy in that moment and, and pleased about where you are in that moment. But, but that lack of satisfaction will drive you to achieve more. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, these are great wise words from an entrepreneur with multiple businesses. So I, I love you sharing that because living presently for the moment and yes you gotta uh, you have aspirations you have goals you have you know very great strong vision uh, but if you don't appreciate what you have be grateful for what you have surround yourself with people that support you but also Absolutely. challenge you people that are ahead of you but also behind you really look at where you're at and be ultra grateful for the opportunity um, that living in UK, I live in Canada, living yes. in where you're at with the people that you have to support you um, makes you want to drive for more, make a larger mm -hmm. impact, you know, support more people. If it's your, your team members or your clients or whatever it may be, uh, share successes. So it's, it's great words of wisdom for sure. Thank you. So now let's move along uh, with your business. So it's all about culture management. Um, so how what how do you how do you really foster a good culture in your definition and based on your principles? A good culture starts with a good leader. I think you know everything in business. As much as we want to create a good culture right throughout the business, it can't foster itself without without strong and positive leadership. So we have a, a man, what we call the mantra principle in uh, the new PL Brand Purpose Institute. And it is, our, it is our methodology, if you like. And mantra is a six step or six component um, process for a more purpose led and principled business. And the M in that acronym of mantra stands for moral leadership because everything has to start with leadership, <clears throat> how they turn up, how they develop their relationship with one another, how they recognize the, the relative balance of power they have in relation to employees, how they set the tone for the conversations, having dialogues, not monologues, and all of these other things. The work they do on themselves to, <clears throat> excuse me, to be self-aware. I think you have to create self-awareness within yourself. And 
that's probably the biggest challenge in leadership, I think, because we all think we are self-aware. You know, everyone talks about being vulnerable and being self-aware and everything else. There wouldn't be anyone who thinks they're not self-aware, but that's part of the paradox and the delusion of, of self-awareness, I think. There was a study I read recently that a group of psychologists had gone out to, to thousands, so in the low thousands, I think three or 4,000 CEOs, and they'd set this criteria, psychological criteria for what self-awareness looks like in leadership. And the overwhelming majority of leaders that they spoke to believed they were self-aware, but I think it was between 20 and 25% actually fitted the characteristics um, of self-aware leadership. So we can't be self-aware by talking to ourselves into the mirror. We have to work with a mentor, work with a coach, as you said, alluded to earlier, get someone to test our assumptions and question our, our propositions and our beliefs and, and, and opinions and so on. We've got to build much greater self-awareness as a leader before we can create a culture that that embeds purpose embeds creativity and and embeds empathy and all of those other great things that we need in business that's a great answer i, I mean culture is so vital to sustain your business right um and if if you don't set it a precedent being a good true leader you're gonna have people leave you morale is gonna be low um you know, respect. Um, there's going to be disappointed clients. Like there's so many disconnects and alignment yes. is key. Understanding different perspectives is important and just showing up, trying different things, being happy with progress, even though everything's going to take a lot longer than you anticipate. Uh, you got to budget in that time and be okay with it. Right. Because everyone Absolutely. wants fast, quick, low, low cost and real rapid growth. But in reality, everything's going to take much longer, cost way more, and, you know, it's going to be super stressful. So yeah. it's how do you, um, you know, be ready for all those uh, so that you can continue growing your own business? Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, there, there's a, we talk about vinyl values at the new p Brand Purpose Institute. And what I mean by that is, and it, and it gives a nod to your point about everyone wants everything done quickly and cheaply. There are leaders who believe that the depth of their value proposition or their purpose is when you come up with a slogan or a series of principles and you print them on vinyl and you put them behind your reception or in your boardroom and it, it's supposed to state what the business is um, and the values that underpin it. What it usually ends up being is a substitute for rather than a demonstration of, you know, they just become vinyl values and the commitment to them is about as thick as the is the vinyl they're printed on. So those values have to come off that wall and they have to be led by leaders. They have to be embedded into every aspect of that culture. You have to think about whatever that value is, how is it demonstrated in the way you speak to people? How is it demonstrated in the way you, you deal with your clients? How is it demonstrated in the way you develop your products? All everything, everything within a business has to focus on values and how you embed them in your business. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I mean, showing up and understanding how everything starts with a leader and then it's embedded in just living, like you're actually doing things, right? Um, as opposed to just putting it on your slogan or business card or, you know, uh, it could be on the back of your wall, right? It doesn't really mean much. So showing up, I, I think, and living through some of those cult cultural values um, is very important. Another question I have is, how do you discover and redefine your purpose? I think it's a, my purpose is an organic thing, like every purpose should be. What I, what I believed I should be doing in, in business 10, 20 years ago has clearly changed because uh, my businesses have changed for one. But my core purpose with the new p &L Institute is I want to create, however ambitious it might be, and probably however deluded it probably looks at the moment, I want to create a global movement for more principled leaders and more purpose-led business. That is my sole and firm and clear purpose with the new PL Brand Purpose Institute. It's more than just a, a desire to build a business. Of course, that's the outcome of what I'm trying to achieve. But actually what I'm trying to do is, in my own way, is to change the way we look at leadership, to change the way leaders consider the way they lead businesses and to consider the purpose that underpins it. 
and it's great for you to have this purpose, but it took you so long, de decades to discover it. And it's only at this point, pivotal time in your lifespan that you're able to go after your true ambitions, which meant there were years in, of struggle. There were years of figuring out like, what am I doing? Trying to figure out, you know, is this my business to be sold, kept going, you know, regret. There's so much going on in every entrepreneur's mind, business owner. And you have to figure out what's best for you at that given time. And to discover your own purpose means you still got to re-engineer your, your mindset and figure things out and always try to readjust, right? Um, pivot or you know, make, make failures and whatever it may be, because life is going to throw a lot of things at you. Let it be, you know, moving to a new country, this pandemic, war, there's so much going on. And you have to figure out what's best for your life at that given time and moment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that's why you have to define, you know, really define your, your purpose, because when you you give examples of the pandemic and so on and all these other things that life throws at you. If you don't have a defined purpose and you don't really believe in that purpose, then you're rudderless. You become rudderless very, very quickly. You lose your, your direction and your vision because actually, as I said earlier, that purpose that you had in that business was the veneer of a purpose rather than a real defined one that you, that you passionately believed in. Yeah, the ethos is so important. And if your core, your core um, is stuck with it, you, you breathe it, live it every single day, then that's what, you know, should be guiding every action that you're taking moving forward. Absolutely. Um, so what's the biggest barrier to understanding your, your purpose? I think probably in some respects, getting out of your own way and actually, you know, working with someone to understand where your real purpose is in life, because we may have an ambition and it may be in complete uh, lack of alignment with where we are in our jobs at the moment, but we've got to sit down with someone and understand what we're really trying to achieve at an individual level, what we're really trying to achieve at a, at a professional or a business level. So I think some people, you know, I've, one of my son, one of my children, he knows what he wants to be in life. He's 16 and he's known what he wants to be since he was nine. Lots of us can't quite figure that out. And it's taken me, as I said, a long, long time to work that out. So it's about getting back to working with someone, mentor, coach again, to getting back to understand what you're passionate about, what you re what really drives you, what change you want to make in the world, and how that might turn up, how that might look in a professional sense. You know, not everyone has to be trying to create a new p &L. It doesn't matter what your purpose is, as long as it sits and it resonates with you as an individual. Exactly. And I love that, you know, not just your son, you help guide you try to let them figure it out right let them be curious um, but most importantly having someone a different perspective having someone that you can trust to guide you give you inspiration and give you some different perspectives wisdom um, because not a lot of people have that and if you want to be a nurse and you want to help save a lot of lives that is your you know goal right like Absolutely. that is and that's totally fine um if if you wanted to ever start a business um what is the root of why you're starting a business who like there has to be a deeper level than just i want to earn money or i want to service more clients i mean why do you want to service more clients who are the clients that you're serving and what's the actual impact that it's going to make to these clients like these are the questions I've learned over the past nine years of running my own agency, um, having surrounding myself with great managers and leaders and being able to speak to so many different business owners, um, allowing me to really ref refine and define how I run my agency today than five years ago. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm always learning and I know I'm never going to just be okay with what the status quo is. I'm constantly trying to add more value or provide more, um, you know, to my clients and listen more, give more, help more of my staff. Like there's always this ongoing battle of trying to do more. And that's what drives me 
as my agency continues to grow, right? Absolutely. And I think, you know, we, most businesses, to, to go back to your point, most businesses start with a purpose of some description to create a new product, uh, product to solve a problem, to, to change their own little part of the world, whatever it happens to be. Not many businesses start as a result of someone waking up on Saturday morning and think I've got nothing better to do, I'll start a business. You know, we, we start with a real reason. But then what I often find in the work with the Institute that over time, that business drifts from its purpose. And you, you can tell that a business is drifting from its purpose because the sole focus, to go back to the new PL, the sole focus ends up being that bottom right hand corner of the spreadsheet. You know, we, we're going to grow five, five percent next year, seven percent next year, ten percent next year. And that's important, but that shouldn't, that should be the outcome. That shouldn't be the purpose. The purpose is to still serve your customers better, to, to change the world in large or small ways, to create products that solve problems, whatever that purpose happens to be. The result of you fulfilling your purpose should be a growth in the bottom right hand side of that. Excel sheet or, or spreadsheet, it shouldn't be the primary focus. But because of the culture, because of the world we're growing, uh, living in, the growth, the ease of information and navigation and what, what people are exposed to in terms of media, um, they're thought to believe that if you're not growing at a multiple of and you're not one of those tech companies that are expanding really rapidly, joining, getting some VC funding or angel investing, then you're not a part of them. And that's yeah. a different culture. But that's pro and con to everything, right? And there's people that are living it and are successful in, to that extent, but are they really happy? Mm -hmm. um, what percentage of people are actually that successful? out of hundreds of people that are running that same kind of industry business niche uh, market, how many of those hundreds are really the top 1%, right? Yeah, or 20% yeah. of the market share. So realistically, it's just like you said, you got to put in time, you got to figure things out, you got to keep working at it. And only a small percentage will actually be successful. Not everyone will be, but be okay with it constantly mm -hmm. grow, constantly learn, constantly uh, evolve, right? And, and I think, you know, you, you're, you're spot on. There is a, there's a huge industry out there around the times five or the times 10, you know, grow by five times or grow by 10 times or, or whatever. But my question would be, if you are starting to buy into that as a young entrepreneur or an old entrepreneur, I mean, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs now that are 50 plus that are entrepreneurs for the first time in their lives. And that's a whole other conversation, I think, which is, which is brilliant. But if you're buying into that, the first question I would be asking you is why are you buying into that? Why, why do you want to be five times the size of you are now or 10 times the size? Do you understand the effort it's going to take to get there? Because it's never as glamorous as the, as the, the Instagram reel, you know, certainly it's not five steps to 10 times. So what are you, why are you trying to get there? If it's just money, then I think if it's just money, then I think you need to reevaluate what the principles are that are underpinning your entrepreneurial purpose at the moment. Because you can grow, every business should grow. That's the nature of business, but it's got to have the right underpinnings. There's a difference between sustainable growth and unsustainable growth. And I talk in one of, my, one of the workshops I deliver about the difference between a, a one-dimensional legend and a purposeful legacy and what you're trying to create in both. And a one-dimensional legend starts, uh, and it's all about, look at us. So we were one store, look at what we've done, we're now a global empire. And it's usually shaped around one or two people or a small group of people with a supporting cast of thousands. But there's no substance to it because all they're focused on is growth for growth's sake. And what we've seen over the last two years is thousands, millions of employees around the world waking up to the fact that actually the business they're working for is a one-dimensional legend. They're just trying to build someone else's legend and there's, no, there's nothing in it for them. There's no purpose, there's no vision. They don't feel part of that community. If you build a purposeful legacy, you can still go from one store to global empire, but the nuance is where you place the, the achievement and the effort. You achieve that through serving customers, not taking from you achieve it through creating a community that believes in your, in your purpose and is trying to create a legacy for that business 
so they will leave it in a better place than than they found it you're trying to create a community of people who believe in a common value uh, vision and a common um set of principles and values and that's more sustainable growth you know and, and there are great examples out there like patagonia is a good example rei that continue to grow north face continue to grow continue to do the right things for the right reasons no one's perfect people get things wrong one of the presentations I give, I say it's not the it's not the shade of perfection we're looking for, but the intensity of the intention. You know, so we're we're looking for businesses who are moving in the right direction for the right reasons with a purpose underpinning them. And I know you mentioned some large brands there, and it all starts with that idea and vision, right? And it all starts with the leaders and acknowledging that they don't know all the answers. Absolutely, um, being vulnerable, being okay with making mistakes um, and then having a supporting cast that is in alignment with being okay right yes perfection yeah. is never realistic right like what does perfect mean to a lot of people doesn't mm -hmm. mean growing at x amount but sales doesn't really mean profitability either right? Yeah, that's right and it doesn't mean loyal customers you can get gain a lot more new customers and not be profitable and not that's servicing right. the type of clients that you really want to work with um, so understanding what is it for the larger picture growing sustainably um, so I, I love this discussion because it seems like you've figured it out after you know many years and decades of running your own businesses um, if you don't mind sharing, like, were there some of the things in your previous companies that really triggered you to want to rediscover why you were doing certain things? And what, what made you motivate yourself to either change, leave, sell? I, I'm not sure what happened during some of these uh, companies, but if you don't mind sharing, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one example I can give is a business that, that failed. Um, and I still, I still love it. I still believe in it. It's still part of me emotionally, but it didn't work. And that was a, when I turned 40, um, I launched a surfwear clothing brand. Um, you know, some people buy fast cars when they have the midlife crisis. I launched a surfwear clothing brand and, you know, I'd surfed as a kid. I'd surfed for many, many years. I loved it as a sport, but I hadn't been on the board for probably at that point about seven or eight years because I'd come to the UK um, I hadn't got to the beach a lot but I still had this passion for surfing so I created a New Zealand influenced New Zealand designed surfwear clothing brand but I quickly discovered I discovered a lot of things through that experience but I mainly discovered that I didn't although I loved surfing I wasn't in the surfing world anymore so I didn't understand the nuance of it. So I was creating this brand for my ego, not for a reason, not for a purpose. I was creating it because I guess I wanted to rediscover something and feel a little bit cool again and create something that's great and you know be, be kind of in the middle of such a great industry. But it was starting it for the wrong reasons because I was starting it about me, not about what I could deliver, not what I could serve, not what I could, I could offer. So that business failed. It took a little while, three or four years, but it eventually just died out really more than anything. Um, I committed less and less time to it. I had a couple of other businesses at the time as well, but it was mainly for the reason that it wasn't closely enough aligned with me at that point in my life. Now, if I'd launched that when I was 20, it would be a very different experience because I was in the industry and I would have been launching it because I was trying to solve a problem. I would have identified something in the in the nature of what we were doing in that um, community that wasn't working and I would have developed a different product produced it for a different reason and 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 recognized where the opportunity was because I was embedded in that community so that was a really really salient lesson for me that actually despite experience in marketing if you really don't understand the industry and you really don't understand the product and you started that business for the wrong reason or without genuine purpose that binds and aligns with you internally for the right reasons, it's a hell of a lot harder to get that product off the ground. That's a great example because as you mature in every business or in life in general, if you were 20, you wouldn't have real life experience as marketing, branding, yeah. 
and business ownership as well and acknowledging personas and understanding like value add service and asking the right probing questions. But in hindsight, um, learning that you were not in it, you were not understanding customers, the users, yeah. and putting yourselves in their shoes on what they want today, trends, yeah. what, you know, color shades, brand, whatever it is, um, because that's what's going on today. And perception of how they purchase things today is different than traditional ways seven, 10, eight years ago, right? Absolutely. Um, because behaviors change, dynamics change, trends change, uh, especially if you're launching a product, right? Like a, a brand recognition. There's so much at play. And how do you market? How do you go to market? How do you perceive yourself? What's the value add? What's the price cost benefit, right? Like there's so much to consider. Um, but running a business is challenging. It's the hardest thing to do, but it's the most rewarding thing to do as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you raise a really, really great point because I, I created a surf brand for the 20 year old me when I was 40. But the industry had moved on 20 years between me being 20 and 40. And, and I still remember, I can, you know, because I think back and analyze this all the time, there's someone I was working with at the time, and she said, you should change the brand in these ways. And she gave me a little document. And I thought at the time, because I was a bit buried in the emotion of that brand, that's not the way the brand needs to go. That's not what this brand looks like. That's not what this brand represents. So I didn't go that way. Um, that was a really silly decision on my part and when I look back because now I am in the industry although I'm much older now I surf all of the time I'm part of the community I'm out there doing it I look back and think she was absolutely spot on but I couldn't see it because I had created a brand for a moment in time that didn't exist anymore and and that's great to acknowledge that in hindsight but living today it's about perspective, right? And Absolutely. putting yourself into the user's mind. And now that yeah. you're back in it, you can acknowledge the different steps that you could have taken. And if things, if you go back in that industry and you want to build something, I'm sure it will be much more successful because you know what problems you could have solved, right? What exactly. kind of, um, you know, people, why people are buying things today because thinking 20 years ago, like 20 years is historic times in today's day and age because technology has changed such a rapid speed. Um, and even with this pandemic and the world, I mean, information age is real time. And Absolutely. therefore, you have to be nimble and fast to adapt and pivot and change, because if you're one month behind, that could be, you know, profit to loss, yeah. right? Like there, there could be a lot of implications of staffing issues to supply chain right now. There's so, so many different variables to really consider. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, you know, but as I said earlier, everything is, everything is about learning and moving forward and taking, you know, taking the time to. I think this is probably a really important point, particularly for young entrepreneurs, is do take the time to analyze what went wrong, but don't give yourself too hard a time in the process of that. So, you know, recognize that failure is part of success. It is part of growing a business. You cannot succeed without failure. That is, I mean, I don't know anyone who hasn't failed on their way to success in some shape or form. You have to change the... You know where the direction is. You might have to change the road to get there. You know, you're going north or west or wherever, but it doesn't mean you always stay on that same road. But you must be accepting of failure, recognize where you went wrong, but don't beat yourself up in that process because beating yourself up doesn't allow yourself to grow and to be the positive entrepreneur that you need to be to then learn from that mistake and move it forward. Yeah, and, and these are great words of wisdom, Paul, um, and someone in their 20s, 30s starting a business um, is maybe just starting to learn how to run a business versus yeah. someone that has a little bit more work experience, life experience, different stages of seeing what's going on in their 40s, 50s, 60s that have better time, guidance, wisdom, life uh, yeah. experience um, to gain wisdom, right? Like to really gauge to see perspectives of you know why things have been going 
well or not well um, and surrounding yourself with also like-minded people, right? Absolutely. Because when you're in your 20s and 30s, I mean, maybe you're surrounding yourself with startup VPC kind of, you know, dreamers, right? Where they're not realistic. But yeah, then yeah. as you mature, you kind of realize who are the people that have actually done well for themselves in your eyes, right? Because success means different things for a lot of different people, yeah. right? Um, so understanding it's not just money, it's about balance, it's lifestyle, it's about, you know, that freedom of choice, right? And um, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. You're able to dictate how you want to run your business and call the shots. But you also have to realize that it's not for everyone because it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of challenges, a lot of growing, a lot of failure, a lot of mistakes that go on, you know, throughout these years and enjoy the process, have fun. Let's Absolutely. embrace Absolutely. it all, right? And, and do, you know, do also, do surround yourself with great people, but also surround yourself with intelligent people who are going to make you uncomfortable with their questioning. Because if you're uncomfortable with their line of questioning regarding your business and they're asking questions and they're probing, that means somehow your business is changing and growing and you are changing and growing. If you surround yourself with sycophants who always tell you that this is a great business and you know, you're going to be a success and you know, I can't believe you wouldn't fail. That's not real life. So if you're uncomfortable with the questions people are asking you, that is a really good place to be because it means you've got to work hard to come up with the answers to address it. And most of the questions, if you're asked, they're being asked from the right people, intelligent people who have a genuine interest in see, helping you see better and do better, then those questions will help you grow. We can't expand and grow and be successful in entrepreneurship without feeling uncomfortable in that process. So you've got, as you said, you've got to find a way to enjoy being uncomfortable, see it as the opportunity for that, for that business to expand and grow. And with uh, all this new technology going on, uh, communities are at your disposal. There's a lot of different groups out there, Absolutely. digitally as well as in person, right? Go to live events, get to network a little bit, um, get a little bit uncomfortable by sharing your stories, right? Get out Completely. there. Because if you're not and you're kind of self-isolated and you're an entrepreneur that thinks you know everything, well, you don't. And yep. you have to get out there and expose yourself and talk to more people because there's so much to learn. You can pick up a book. You can go yep. read, uh, watch some videos on YouTube. You join some communities out there. But get out there and keep absorbing content because this is a never-ending journey, right, of Absolutely. business ownership. I'm always learning. I'm constantly challenging myself. My team challenges me. It's a lot of fun, though. So you got to make sure that you have fun doing what you love and have fun with that purpose. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So final words, Paul, a uh, couple questions. How can some of the listeners who don't know who you are, like check you out, reach out to you, um, check your institute out if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, absolutely. So the best place to start would be to go to principlesandleadership.com. You'll find the podcast and the institute on there. Or you can email me at paul at principlesandleadership.com. Very happy to have a conversation with you. Um, the podcast is on all, as, as with yours, on all of the major Spotify channels, or sorry, all of the major podcast channels, Spotify, iTunes, Audible, Amazon Music, and so on. But the, the website's probably a good place to start, principlesandleadership.com. Amazing. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Paul. Um, learned a lot. Hopefully some of the listeners got some great valuable insights and tips here um, just so that you're feeling more comfortable on this journey because you're not alone. Everyone's going through the same challenges as you are. Some people may take a little bit longer and that's okay. Some may not feel like it's cut out for them, right? And that's totally fine as well. Yeah. But acknowledging where your strengths, what you really want to do, have fun along the way. And don't be too hard on yourself, right? Because life is this long journey. And for everyone that's in their 20, so what if you're not successful in your first, second, third time around, yeah. right? You have 30, 40, 50 years to still try different things, right? And that's what it's all about. Just keep going, keep trying different things and having fun. Absolutely. So thanks a lot. And I'll talk to you later. Okay, Paul?
Thanks, John. A real, real pleasure. Thank you for leading me on the show.